Welcome to the Hound's Tales podcast presented by Roxy Designs, GFR Forestry, Chestnut Mountain Feed Company, Tagged Out Hunting Apparel, Farm Bureau Insurance of Appomattox and Matt English, and Affordable Auto Care. Welcome, everybody, to the 16th episode of the Hounds Tales podcast. As always, I'm joined with Dylan Watson and Daniel Evans. My name is James Hudson. And tonight we have a guest on our show. He's a friend of ours. Uh, he's a local steel hunter from for most of his life, if not all of his life. And uh, he kind of wanted to be on the show. He had hit me up a while back. I shared and posted the some of the kind of crazy things that the that was being presented to the Virginia uh Department of Wildlife Regulations Department, and uh, he kind of hit me up and was me and him kind of discussed how ridiculous some of the things were that they were presenting and how much it was really going to kill the sport. And he, we got to talking back and forth, and he mentioned he wanted to be on the show. But um, tonight, our guest is David Brown. Uh, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you all for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, so I guess getting kind of into it, we'll uh, we'll kind of talk about you know how long have you been hunting uh, as far as you go, you know, as your as your whole life goes. I I would say I have been hunting pretty much the entire thirty one years that I've been on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a common consensus around here with with I guess you could say our age group of of hunters. It seems yeah. to be it was just handed down. Oh yeah. Um, you do you spend most of your time on 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 private land, like as far as uh, like family land? I think that's me and you kind of discussed it. That's kind of what you stick to is more of the like family land stuff, correct? I have family land, neighbors' properties that have always allowed me to hunt. Um, I, I do go to the national forest um, in Amherst quite frequently. Right. Right. I bet there's some mooses up there too, ain't it? Yeah, it's just you gotta walk too damn far to get to it. <laughs> 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 yeah, that makes it a little more difficult. And I I guess you're are you carrying a blind or are you just kinda tree crouch or something like that? Um I have carried in a uh climbing stand before, but most of the time it's tree crouch. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, I bet carrying that uh, climber is a, a, a task at, at hand. I, I even tried to mountain bike in one time, and that was. <laughs> <laughs> I wish somebody would. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say I wish I could have seen that. <laughs> I, I was considerably younger, considerably lighter, and dumber too so <laughs> I, all i can ma- imagine is if you actually got one and had to bite back it bike out yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I see you going through the woods now with the deer strapped to your back <laughs> i didn't think about that when i did it <laughs> uh, one of those live and learn situations ain't it mm-hmm. it is yeah, they, um, yeah, that, that, that definitely would have been a little interesting, but you know, the, the reason we brought you on, uh, we wanted to kind of, to kind of go over, you know, your, your thoughts on dog hunting as a whole. I know, like you said, you've been still hunting your whole life and ha- have you ever actually, have you ever been dog hunting with anybody? Have you ever tried it? Yeah. Have you? Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. What? Well, did you did you enjoy it? Uh, was it a was it at least an enjoyable experience, or was one of those things? You know, I, I've talked to some people, and I ask that because I've, I've talked to some people that have tried it, and they went, and the, the person that they went with, it just wasn't an enjoyable time. They didn't have a good time. Maybe it was an off day. Maybe they just maybe something about the way they their hunting style didn't suit them, and then they've gone with somebody else and fell in love with it. You know. Um, what the time that you went, you know, was it at least 
uh, a fun time, <laughs> I guess I could say. Well, I, I would say I, I think I've – I can come up with three times I've been right off the top of my head. Okay. Maybe four. Right. And I'd say like three out of the four, I enjoyed it. Right. One time, I, he, he could have taken me back to the house and I'd have been perfectly fine sitting there drinking coffee. <laughs> i've got days like that too you know, yeah, but to, uh, you know I, i've got days like that still hunting so that's right there's <laughs> always in bad days yeah well but, it, at least there was enjoyable experience with it yes yes and and i i've killed deer with uh dog hunters okay I, and i have killed a good amount of deer while still hunting in front of the dogs that have run through. I was actually, I was, I was just thinking that as you were saying, I, I was wondering if you had ever had that happen. Oh yeah. All the times. Good. Good. Now see, you know, I think we had talked about that before on one of the episodes. I think we all agree that we love that. That, that hurts. That does not hurt our feelings at all. You know, the, the the whole point of the dog hunt is to have the the game killed in front of the dogs and and it's yeah. for the chase. So go it's ahead, ex- Dylan. Especially when when it's the land owner, you know right. he's letting us run the dogs there and he kills in front of the deer. And as long as he's happy with it and he kills the deer, I have nothing against that. Have at it, fire down. <laughs> right. That um, I hope I hope that it wasn't. Whenever, whenever you did kill the deer in front of the dogs, I hope it wasn't no issue with them, you know, because I know some people are kind of funny about that. I have, um, I've had one instance where a person from the club around me that I'm going to remain nameless. <laughs> I understand. Um, he he didn't take too kindly to me shooting a deer in front of his dogs, even though I was on my family's land. Right. He was under the impression that if his dog is running the deer, then the deer is his. Mm-mm. No, I, I, to me, to us, I think you did the right thing. To be honest with you, that's that's your land. They cross over, so. You've had, I guess y'all's family's land has had a hunting club near or around it probably the whole time that you've been around. You've been alive, right? Yes. Or been hunting. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, is I've always been curious to ask, you know, somebody that doesn't dog hunt, because a, a lot of the still hunters that, or, well, I'm sorry, a lot of the land that we have verbal permission or, or just written permission to hunt on, those guys either hunt with us or used to hunt with us or it's one of those kind of situations. They, they've been a part of dog hunting before. Now you've never actually been full fledged into it. Has there, uh, how does that, I guess my, how do I ask this question? Like, how does that, how does that relationship work between y'all and, and the, and the hunting club? It's, um, I would say it's a mutual respect with 90% of the hunting club around us. I, I mean, most of them I'm related to. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> Good old small town stuff there. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's like <laughs> wave at somebody. Hey, we're going to drop dogs here. Drop them. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. I, yeah. You know, I, there's a small number of them that, I guess it's just the type of people they are. And I mean, you get them in every crowd. So that's it. Yeah. There's always a bad seed in every crowd. Yeah. And I mean, it is what it is. I. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's it. I, it's, it's refreshing to hear, to hear that though, that you're y'all have been, you know, like you said, it, that you know them and they're like, Hey, can we drop drop dog or drop dogs or, Hey, uh, we're going to drop dogs over here. Is that, you know, that kind of thing. And y'all like, shoot, go for it. Have fun. 
And yeah. I guess pr- I would say you probably – I mean, how many times when they could do that do you go back and get your stand and wait for them to run them to you? Quite frequently. <laughs> <I mean, so>. <laughs> 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 you know – that re- that reminds me, it's 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 a touch. It's it's on topic, but it's off topic. But with that, when you said that, my little brother before he had passed, he was he was never one to get out of bed. He always slept in, and I'm I'm one of the dog hunters. I at five o'clock in the morning, I'm up chomping at the bit. I'm going to help make breakfast at the hunting club, and we're turning loose at daybreak. And this joker at ten thirty, he rolled out of bed. And come on out there and join everybody. Well, my dad had a soft spot and he would call him if the dogs would run in close to the house and he'd wake him up. And lo and behold, that sap sucker would wake up out of bed, throw his boots on, leave him untied. I mean, just sweat pants and a sweatshirt on, walk back behind the house, go kill the damn deer and call us. Hey, we need help dragging this thing out of here. <laughs> <laughs> My dad has a handheld CB radio mm-hmm. years past, you know, we would probably get out of the woods from hunting in the morning, right around 10, 10 30. Right. And as soon as we got back to the house, that CB radio got cut on and he was listening. <laughs> and I can't tell you the number of times that him, me or my godfather had, were standing on the back porch and, all right, they're dropping them. Get ready. <laughs> well, so, and you know, and and, and I, you said you're related to most of the guys in the club, so I'm assuming that they would know that y'all do that. Yes, they do. So and that's that mutual respect, you know, that mm-hmm. you were talking about earlier. You yeah. know, it's it's a it's a lot easier when you're related, but that's the kind of stuff that as as dog hunters, you knowing that. The dogs cannot read posted signs, so they do cross over into land boundaries that they probably shouldn't be sometimes. You know, that's the kind of respect and mutual understanding that I would love to be able to promote. I love hearing you say that, that y'all have that understanding with each other, and they know that it's your land and it's your right, and they mm-hmm. just, you know, go for it. And, and both sides, go for it. If the dogs cross on, onto your land, you, you're not upset about it, right? No. Yeah. Now, I, I will say I, I get a little irritated when I go out for an afternoon and then I find out that the dogs have run through there before I got onto my stand. <laughs> right. Well, and uh, yeah, that leads me to another question I had wrote down, you know, is I, like you just said, how many times does dog hunting actually really affect your hunt? I wouldn't say that it affects it a whole lot. Right. You know, now. Yeah. Now, when I was a teenager, I'd get pretty hot about it. (laughs) Right. You know, thinking about it and thinking about how many times it actually does affect me, it it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, so what? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, there's a lot of times, and we've seen it, that the dogs will run through a block they're not going to get every single deer that runs through that block when they run through it. Yeah. They might spook them, but those deer are so smart. Now they know if they didn't get hemmed up in that, in that chase, they're going right back to what they were doing. Oh yeah. Give them 15, 20 minutes. They'll be right back to where they were. Yeah. Especially a big buck. Yeah. To watch deer interact with other animals is kind of, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I I get what you're saying. Like, last year, I got my real – I'd been still hunting before. I guess you could call it still hunting. I'm not the avid still hunter. I don't go out there and and set up blinds and and all year and game camera and and, uh, and work on calls and stuff like that. I never did it before. I finally – tried it during muzzleloader this year and i really got my first experience on actually calling a deer into me and just watching them naturally move and it's it's actually really fascinating just watching them kind of just do their own thing just looking for whatever they're coming for Mm -hmm. 
it, it, it really is. It, it's wild. It's a wild yeah. experience. Yeah. And, you know, being up in the stand like that, when the dogs come through, I bet that you get a whole different take on how they maneuver and how they act, knowing that the dogs are, you know, are behind them and coming. You know, I seeing what I've seen from dogs running deer by me, I, I can almost tell you that, and I don't know if it's this way with every person's dog, mm-hmm. a deer is not going to let a dog get that damn close to it. Right. Right. He can stretch it out when it needs to. It, it, yeah. And, you know, I, I've seen it where I've had a deer run by, I've shot it, sat there, watched it, made sure. And the only reason I knew it was being run was because there was something howling at the top of its lungs about a half mile away from it. <laughs> 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 Somebody gonna get offended and they hear you say that. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to offend anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. No, I mean that's and that's the thing too. And it's you know you were talking about the we were talking about it before we started recording was the um, was the coyote pens and the fox pens and. The, the it's the same way in those those the game stays so conditioned so healthy inside those pens we watch it uh if you ever want to see a prime time example of it and if you ever just want to go spectate and watch you ought to get up and go to foxtail down in north carolina it's a great big open field in front of it and these coyotes when they bust out into this field they 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 run 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 across and they build a gap and they turn around and look and they pace themselves going across that field and just slow down, slow down, slow down. And they let the dogs catch back up to them. And then when they get about 20 or 30 yards behind them, the coyotes grab second gear and, and chuck down and hit the boost and go. And they gap it back out by the, under the other end of the field. They know how to pace themselves. They're not going to let them catch them. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's another thing. It's like uh, the last pool hunt. Uh, pool mm-hmm. hunt we went to. We sat there and literally watched a fox come right beside the fence, like a tall grassy area, and lay down. And I kid you not, it had to be thirty to fifty dogs that passed right by the fox, and the fox just standing there looking at it. We're looking at the fox, and then all of a sudden <laughs> the fox just gets out and moses on back into the woods, and the dogs are like, "What? What just happened? Where'd it go?" <laughs> so I mean, it, it's. That stuff like that does happen with the dog hunting stuff. I mean, it's it's hilarious when it does happen, but you know, the, we had the a game chase. Is smart. Go ahead, go. Ahead. I'm sorry. Oh uh, no, I was just saying the game. The game is smart to to survive, is what I'm saying. They're they're not gonna let a dog just run up and take them down. You know, we had a chase at the last the last day. I don't remember if it was last season or the season before last. We were running. We just happened to jump three bucks at one time, which was a rarity. And these bucks were coming across a cutover and got down to a creek bottom. And his, the, the dogs weren't far behind them. I mean, they weren't necessarily chomping at their butts, but they were within visual sight, I would say. And these deer got down to the bottom and got into some thick brush. And then next thing you know, watching it from the other end of the cutover, you see the dogs come out on the other end of the cutover. No barking, no nothing going on, nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. And, and, and searching and hunting and trying and trying and trying to backtrack and going right back over the tracks and everything. I mean, these are some good dogs, too, that were in there. And I turned mine to a loose, too, and they'd walk right down the same path and, and never got it right. Um, oh, yeah. You, you remember that, right? Yeah, that's the one old me and Daniel. Uh, I know that one the end of last year, me and Daniel shot at. Turned my I dog loose, your dog yep. loose. I, uh, you talk about the one in the, in the Jeff place. I mean, uh, Big Hill. Yeah, Big this Hill, one was yeah. in Big Hill. 
No, th- this one, these are the ones in, um, in Jeff plays. These three bucks ended up in, they laid down in a swampy area of the creek bottom and just sat and did not move. And I was talking to one of the guys that was, that watched it happen. And he said, he pointed to my, my he, I have one dog in my box. And he said, the dog stopped barking in that direction down in that creek bottom. And I hooked my dog to a leash and walked him down there. And sure, and sure enough, the only reason I know where they were laying is I walked down there my own self. And when I got down there, they all jumped up. They stopped on the dogs in a wet, swampy area to where their scent couldn't be hit and lay down up to their necks in water. That was one of the wildest things I've seen during a, a deer chase that they've done to just make the, the dogs completely ev- evade them. You get pretty uh, smart when you have to survive your entire life. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's 100% right. <laughs> um, you know, we kind of rolled a little bit into the into the fox pen stuff. You know, we were talking again before – we start, you know, uh, throughout the day, and you had some kind of questions on the on the field trial and stuff that we do with the the fox and Cody pins, you know. So I'll let you kind of, you know, if you had any things that you were curious about, what was your your thoughts on that? I guess you know, I'm assuming that you take your dogs to them for yes. exercise, right? To get them running keep them up in shape and whatnot. Yes, that's correct. How yeah, that's, does it, how does it affect them when it comes to deer hunting? I, uh, <laughs> that's actually a very good question. And you could ask 10 different people and you're going to get 10 different answers to me. It, you know, to me, it, it affects them huge. You're talking about taking a dog in the deer in the and the outside world and in, in the deer world that de- that dog needs to be able to be focused go out there and hunt try try to pick his own thing up and he's got to go out there in open woods there's no limitations he's got to be able to hunt all around to do it in the pen you're 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 um how do I say it you're limited mm-hmm. to 100 to 1000 acres and there's a certain amount of game in it. There's there's only but so many places it's going to go. Yeah. So to me, if you overrun a deer dog, if something that you want to keep in the deer woods, if you overrun them in the pen, they will lose that hunt. That's just my my thoughts. You know, um, Dylan, what's what are your what is your take I mean, on that? I, I agree with you with that. Um, we've seen it to where we can take one of our deer dogs just tree stock dog and run him in a pen just a few times and we turn him loose on the outside and he's running roads yeah it's just because he's thinking okay i i I don't have to hunt there's something else that'll pop up or another dog will get it running and i'll part to that pack Mm -hmm. Uh, that that has happened several times with my dogs and i know it's happened to james because i've heard him over to cb a few times Yep. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, uh, that's another thing that kind of kind of messes a a, tr- a true deer dog up. I mean, but I mean, like you said before, there's there's a lot of people that's going to give you different answers. But it's right in in the state of Virginia, uh, you can only have fox pens. So a fox pen, you got to have a little bit more hunt in the dog than you do, say, a, a coyote. So you go to North Carolina and the coyote, I mean, you still need a little bit of hunt, but nine times out of 10, that, that chase on that coyote is going to be a sight chase. Most of the time, not saying all of it, but it's, it's all fun on what you want to do with that dog. Yeah. Yeah. But it definitely, it definitely does make an effect. Now on the positive side, and Daniel, you could probably attest to this, you know, get you get your opinion on this. Yeah, you may lose that 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 hunt a little bit. I'm not gonna say you're gonna lose all of it, but I 
I have a weird standard to my dogs and how they hunt. Like I'm, I'm, I grew up watching and walking with dogs and watching them hunt. So I have a high standard when it comes to hunt, but on the positive note, those pins absolutely jam. There's no stopping for however long you're in it for most of the time. Your dog is really going to get into some good shape and really have some good speed behind. I mean, don't you agree, Daniel? Oh, yeah. Speed, stamina. It definitely yeah. helps them run longer. I mean, it's nonstop in the pen. Like you said, the outside world, it's kind of run for a little bit. But if you lose it, you got to find something else. Mm-hmm. And then and they usually it ain't much stopping most days right yeah it's so that there, there there's the positive side to to putting the deer dogs in there but i will say 95 percent of the time um people in the pen um they're not going to have strictly deer dogs go it's just one of them things you don't you don't really waste the the spots or the time of taking deer dogs in it if you don't have to, if you need to you know it's just one of them deals, um, for the for the fact of when you're pleasure running, it's a limit on how many dogs they let go in the pen. Okay. Yeah. Now I will say that the more people we talk to, I would probably say about. Anywhere from 65 to 75 percent of the people that field trial was they have strictly deer dogs and then they have strictly pin dogs. I've I've seen that a few times also. Mm-hmm. That way they don't mess up the hunt and they're and they're deer dogs and they've got strictly pin dogs. Right. Right. But then you yeah and then you got your guys that use the foxhounds for both. Yeah. You've got some guys. I mean, it's it, it depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Oh yeah. Want to take a quick break, real quick, and take a second to talk about Roxy Design. Uh, Roxy has been working her butt off for us here lately. She has created a new logo for us. It looks awesome. We're very excited to present that to y'all here by the end of the day that y'all are listening to this podcast. Um, And she's also working extremely hard on a banner for us. It's going to have our new logo, uh, beautiful background, and all of our sponsors for the show on it. And we're going to be presenting that at every hunt that we go to and having it on display. So, Roxy, thank you for your hard work. If y'all ever need anything, uh, anything like that to look it up, look up Roxy design on Facebook. She is a graphic designer, so she can do just about anything from business cards, um, any kind of forms, signage to weddings and birthday invitations and favors, just shoot her a message and ask. She can do anything. And she does a lot of hound gear and she's uh, I know she's a hound owner, her own self. So it's really cool to see that and be able to work with her. And we can't thank her enough for everything she does. So thank you, Roxy. And we can't wait to see the uh, the banner when it gets done. What other what other ideas was coming across your head? How in the hell do you judge a good deer dog? <laughs> <laughs> um, the lady well, question. <laughs> it is. It is absolutely. And again, that's one of the things that you could uh, ten different people, ten different answers. Yeah. And I, I know for a fact that me and Dylan are probably going to give you two completely separate different answers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go, go, what, go ahead, Dylan. You, I'll let you go ahead and start this one off. I want to hear, I want to I mean, hear what you're. I mean, me as a, as a, the deer dog, I've got, which James already said, he's real big on the hunting part, which I have one dog in my lot right now that is, I consider a jump dog. So she'll go out, jump the jump the deer, and then the whole pack will go in with her. I'm more of a have that one go in, jump it, and the rest of the pack is just just speed. They stay on the track and pretty much I would like my pack to sight chase what they're looking at. Other than that that one jump dog. 
Um, that that's just my taste, and I love a good fast-paced chase. Right. And I, right. I know James is. I know how his dog is and everything. I I know his is going to be completely opposite. <laughs> 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 and it, it, it is true it, to a point. Um, I like, I don't know. I, I, I like, how do I say this? I like if I take, like, I got, I got five, one, two, three, five. four, five, six, five, five, six, five. six. what deer dogs, five, Fader, Sith, you lost Maul. Whiskey. Fader, Sith, Maul, Snoke, Bear, and uh, Anakin. Oh, yeah, you did. So you had seven. <laughs> yeah, I had seven. I yeah. thought you had so, six. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so <clears throat> I would like to be able to any of my dogs except for one. I can take out in the woods. Bear's about the only one I haven't built the confidence up to do this yet. But on the other five, I can take every single one of those dogs out there by themselves, and they're going to jump, hold onto the track, and run their own game. That's that's my opinion of a good dog. He doesn't need anybody else to do the job for him. <clears throat> he 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 can do it all by himself. He goes out there and, and it can get aggravating too at, at some points. And, and Dale and Daniel both can attest to this, that all of my dogs have a lot of hunt in them. So I've had multiple ch- times where I'll turn all six of my dogs loose at one time. And I know towards the end of the season, I can't remember Daniel, if you were riding with us or not, Towards the end of the season, we had a time where I turned all six of mine loose and two jumped one deer, two jumped another deer, and two jumped another deer. And we had three different chases going on in three different directions at one time. I, I love it. it. It makes it a little bit of a cluster, but I love it. That just that proves to me that each one of my dogs can go out and do the job, hold the track, and stay true to it. That's just that's my opinion of a good dog is that dog should be able to go out there and jump his own game and run that track. Okay. You know, they know, uh, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of new to it, you know, uh, still like, I mean, we, I feel like we say that every time we go through an episode, but <laughs> you've been, co- you've been coming on, you've been coming with us a lot more now and, and you've come out in the, in the woods with us, with me, just pleasure running some too. And you know, what, what are some of the things that are you're seeing that you think make, what's your opinion on what makes a good, a, a good deer dog? I like both sides, but I would probably lean more towards you. Like I yeah. want, I would want at least a couple of dogs that could do their own thing. Yeah. And then if I had a couple that was like Dylan said, that had the speed and, and would pack up. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm kind of in, in the middle of y'all is what I seem to like. Right. I would rather probably have all of them be able to do their own thing, but at least have a few. Yeah. Yeah. At least have three or so that, that could really go out and do their own thing. Right. And, and David kind of to elaborate, uh, the, the, the hunting side of it. And I can, uh, it's just cause that's what I've fallen over. The, what I mean by hunting, hunting one down is these dogs will actually, they are nose to the ground. You got some that will like, like will, will hark to a, to a hunt. And what I, what we mean by hark is when they hear another dog bark, that's when they go to that dog and that's when they put their nose on the ground. But you got some that just have that natural want to put their nose on the ground and find it for their own selves. That's yeah. what I love to see. That's okay. what I love to see. Yeah. I can understand right. that. Yeah. You know, I, I just, you know, I have several friends on Facebook, that, you know, 
it's like I'm the oddity around here because I still hunt <laughs> and 99% of my friends dog hunt. So right. I get on Facebook and I see these pictures of, you know, dogs with ribbons and I'm like, <laughs> well, can you tell me that a dog is better than another dog? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I got a pit bull that'll chase a deer. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I do. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one that'll fight bear. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's, go ahead. It's, it's funny because um, I, I, I've went to Georgia one time with a buddy to mm-hmm. hunt hogs. Yeah. And they hunt hogs. <laughs> Data wants to do that something fierce. Oh, I'm done. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm originally from Alabama. So, I mean, when we was living down there, that was the thing to do was was hog hunt with with uh, pits and i actually was too i was i was at that young age i knew what was going on but i never went uh but that that's a big thing down there big big thing yeah it, well, okay. it was the wildest thing i've ever seen yeah we're gonna let 40 pit bulls out on one farm and then drive <laughs> over two more and just stand there <laughs> yeah i i would be in a lot of trouble with the wife if it gets like yeah. that here in virginia <laughs> i've watched youtube videos of it it just looks intense it looks so insane but but you know it, you talk about what you do talk about the ribbons and stuff you see people posting with the trophies and, and stuff like that on dogs and there are outside field trials, but probably most of the time that you're seeing that, that is the inside. Now, I'm not going to say this is wholeheartedly true, but I would say a good portion. What makes a good deer dog does not make always a good uh, field trial dog. <clears throat> Agreed. Because, yeah. I mean... I, I took, I would take, personally, I would take my deer dogs. And if you wanted to have a competition on who gets more deer killed in front of them, in front of those dogs, and who's able to all around jump, run, and get the deer killed in front of your dogs, I would put my dogs up against anybody in the whole freaking country. I don't care. I have a lot of faith in these dogs. I'm not going to say they're going to win the whole time or do the best, but I would, I would I'd not be afraid to put them up. But if you ask me to put these set of deer dogs in the pen, I'm not doing it. I'm not, well, I refuse. They're not going to, they will lose and they will get their butts drug around. They don't have that raw speed that the fox sounds do. That's right. That's what I was getting ready to say. That's, that's like that, that one dog of mine that, this dog, you turn her loose on the outside, <laughs> and James James will confirm this. She uh, she will run rabbit, she will run fox, <laughs> she will run deer, and she will run coyotes on the outside. If you bring her to a hunt, she will shut off. She will yep. literally sit at the gate and look at you. Yep, she does not like it. What was that? What did you get? That dog got scratched one time, what, 20 minutes into a hunt? Was that what it was? 15 minutes into a hunt, 15. she got scratched for loafing. Yep. And that was, like, I just got started back into the dog dog hunting probably, what, two two years ago? Yeah, that's about right. And she was the first one that, that I got to start back up. And she just, uh, as far as a deer dog for hunting, like getting out there and want it, she's got it all. She, my wife even confirmed she's not going anywhere. She, she's going <laughs> to be here her whole life. But the day that I seen that dog compared to a foxhound on the outside and on the inside, it, it's drastic. It, it's drastic. Like, I thought that little that red jip of mine was just the greatest thing on earth, and then all of a sudden here comes this foxhound I just picked up and put bus links on. I'm like, hold on, <laughs> yeah, something ain't right. But <coughs> it, it's a it's a complete 
completely different world between the two breed breeds, I guess you would call it. It's yeah. It's pretty cool. Yep. Yep. Did uh what other questions you got for us? I guess the biggest thing that I want to know outside of the questions I've all already asked is mm-hmm. <clears throat> what is the dog hunting community doing <clears throat> as a whole to kind of get the bad apples out? <laughs> um, that's a loaded question too. I, I, I know, but you know, I, I've grown up around here my entire life. So I hear the same stories about people doing questionable things with dogs Right. Everybody else does. Yes. So. And and I'll be honest, that was my biggest thing before I actually went out with James and Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. I I remember you telling us that that you, you were, you had always heard so many bad stories about, about dog hunters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like you said earlier, it's always a bad apple in every yeah. group. And, I mean, when when we hear something, especially me and James, you'll see us get red in the face when something like that happens because we just want to yeah. go to a person and strangle them. Like, look, you're killing our sport that we grew up on. And if this gets taken away because of something you did, we're coming for you. Just to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> now, see, and there, there are certain things. I, I know one example that pops to mind right away is – the Virginia Dog Hunting Alliance actually has a reward out for any kind of uh, information that leads to an arrest on dumping dogs, the abandonment of dogs. Dog abandonment in Virginia is illegal. Yeah. Um, and the Virginia Dog Hunting Alliance is actually has a reward, and they post it probably once or twice a month. And if you see somebody abandoning a hunting dog, they want you to re- report it. And report it to them, and let's get it taken care of, and get these people off the streets. Right. And let's get them in some kind of make something happen to them. I think it's even—I don't know if it's a felony or if it's a misdemeanor, but it's a pretty hefty little fine for the abandonment of a dog. Mm-hmm. And that's that's, I think, of all the things that the bad seed dog hunters do. Um, I think that's most. Mm. That one and starving your dog. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say the starving of dogs. Yes. And that's, yeah. you know, that one is not as popular as, as it gets made out to be. And there's really not a lot of people that do it. I don't know. I, I've never heard of anybody that I personally know doing it. I know it ha- has been done in the past, but I don't know of anybody, my own self, that does it. Well, I mean, and I think a whole lot of that goes back to the actual breed of the dog. Because, you know, you right. take a common house dog that's fat and happy and doesn't move much its entire life. Yeah. And a person that doesn't know anything about a hound, look at a hound. Right. That dog's too skinny. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't dog hunt, and I can distinguish. You know, hey, that hound's perfectly. Healthy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's, I think that's what gets that rep. Yeah, is that you got a lot of people that see a a skinnier dog and they call it malnourished, and it's almost <laughs> an assumption. So I can't, like I said, I don't know anybody personally that starves dogs. And I think you're right. It make, you make a very valid point. I think there's a lot of people that don't know the breed, and they do see that this dog, and you can see the back two ribs on it. That dog's not hungry. That dog is perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. It's just how it's how it's raised. In yeah. fact, that dog is actually ten times as healthy as that fat, overweight uh, Chihuahua sitting in somebody's house that's probably complaining about it. Barking football. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Now, well, now, it's another. Go ahead. Go ahead it's go another ahead. thing I've noticed, and especially with the foxhounds. I've really seen it more in them than any. 
that dog can be, I mean, look just as fat when you let it out. But by the end of the day, by the end of its running, it has lost the weight. Mm-hmm. It has worked that weight off. But guess what? It goes back in the lot, it eats, and it gets back fat and happy again. It's the nature. Right. I mean, if you go out here and run a marathon, you ain't going to weigh the same thing you did when you started. Um, now, along with both those things you just said, I mean, you don't hear as much about the starving of dogs as you did back, say, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. 10, yeah, 15 that was... years ago, you didn't have the Garmin uh, tracking system. You didn't have the beep beep collars. All you had on that dog was a collar with your name, your phone number, uh, and maybe an extra phone number of a buddy, just in case you couldn't get your hands on that dog. You turn that dog out loose on Saturday, or back then you turn it loose on Saturday, you might not get that dog back on Saturday evening. It might be Sunday. It might be Monday. It's just, mm-hmm. it was harder back in the day. And people would think that you would starve your dogs because of that. But it's, it's actually, you, you couldn't get your hands on the dog. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, that's like a, the thing with the hunting club. That's, that's what a club is for is back then was to help you catch them dogs to get back home. Yeah. And you make up, uh, you make, you bring up a good point, and and that kind of goes along with your question too. These these tracking systems, um, all hunting clubs have a certain perimeter that they hunt. There's uh, obviously once they get to the end of their permission land or lease land, it's time to try to get the dogs up. Once you get past that point or get close to that point, it, it's time to get them up and. Uh, Yes, hearing helps. You know, I, I'm still an avid, avid believer that my ears can outrun that GPS. But the GPS has, has helped a ton on being able to, to catch dogs before they do cross that border. So that's another thing that has really, as the dog hunters as a whole, has really pushed and almost everybody out there now you still got a few old timers like my dad that refuses to buy one and put a <laughs> put anything with an antenna on his dog <laughs> but the, but you got most a lot of your dog hunters now have put those on there for that fact that it's a lot easier to get these dogs back and keep them from from going to places that they're not supposed to be that they don't want them to be um but yeah you know there you know there's we had talked before that there's always there's always bad seeds in in everything and there's there's I, I know i know at least our club if we ever get a bad seed into the club we have rules set in place that either a we can get them gone we can kick them out of the club at any point that is in our bylaws that if if a member is deemed detrimental to the integrity of the hunting club, they can be removed immediately with no refund, no nothing. Um, or you get to a point where if necessarily doing anything wrong, but they're not doing anything right either. Um, a lot of your a lot of your guys will just make that person it's you know they, they, how do I say this without being mean but you you almost bully them out you almost bully them out yeah you, you make the you, if there is somebody that's putting a bad reputation on their club on your club they're not doing anything bad enough to just kick them or, or have them back or, 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 you know, or even as bad as call the law. On them. If they're not doing anything like that, you almost, I mean, we've had a member like that a long time ago that was like that. And we just bullied his way out. Anytime he would show up, we, we, we ran off. He asked what was going on. No answer. I mean, and at some point that person would give up. It, it sounds really mean. It sounds really horrid. 
and it really sounds like middle school, high school, petty stuff. But at the same point, we're also looking out for our club, mm -hmm. for the integrity of the sport, and, and that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> I guess as a whole, it's there are certain, as far as clubs, there are certain rules that are put in um, that that prevent members that are bad seeds from staying. Um, I know we actually just implemented a rule this year that we're going on a one year probationary period. You get one year to see if you're fit for the club. If you're not fit, you don't get invited back. We do a vote, a blind vote. So it's all a paper vote at the beginning in the spring. And you have to have two thirds vote to stay in the club. If you don't have two thirds vote, sorry about your luck, but you don't come back. Okay. So there's there's certain ways that, that clubs can make rules within in the club because it's an actual uh, it's an actual quote unquote organization. Um, clubs have to have certain we have certain guidelines we have to go by. We have to have presidents, vice presidents, chairmen, blah blah blah, secretary treasurer, and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and then there are things that people like the Virginia dog hunting Alliance is doing. Um, and I think North Carolina and pretty much all dog hunting States that have the abandonment rules are doing, um, like the, 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 the abandonment of dogs that the dog hunting Alliance is, is huge on that. Um, I know I've mentioned it before, but I've always had a dream that if I hit the lottery, I'd like to buy a big old plot of land you know, a couple thousand and fence it in and all these abandoned dogs that get just dropped off. Cause there are horrible people out there that do it. I'd like to be able to take all those hunting dogs and put them in that pen and feed them every day and just let them live their lives out in that, in that block of woods and just let them hunt in that block of woods the whole rest of their life. And they're not going to have to worry about getting lost or, or anything like that. Uh -huh mentioned and i mean james i know you perfect example there's several guys that i know that has either a random dog showed up and they kept it or they went to the pound and picked it up because nobody mm -hmm. wanted it and they are some running machines like it, <laughs> it's crazy what people will actually abandon it, it, yeah. it's crazy yeah and it's for the lack of interest in feeding is what it boils down to and taking care of the dog. And it's pathetic. And like he said, I've got one and, and I will clarify this dog did show up, but I made every effort I could to try to find an owner for weeks and weeks and weeks before I decided to hold on to him. He um, will burn one up. Let me that, that's a, that's a running damn dog. He is one of the best deer dogs I've ever seen. But I've got a friend that actually uh, a walker showed up at his house. Right. He, he made every attempt to find an owner and he called the dog warden and dog warden's like, this is what I can do. And now it is the fattest, happiest walker. <laughs> hound. I mean, this thing has got a memory foam mattress. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. No, retired. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be Vader. Yeah, yeah, probably so. Probably when he gets to the end. Yep, and he can't Vader, get up there and run them Vader more. And both. Yep, yep. I got an old boy. He he's an earned his life and as much as much comfort as he can get. Um. Well, did you have any more questions for us, David? I. I think I'm good on my end. Okay. Um, well, well, we'll hit one little last point real quick before we, we've had a pretty good little episode so far. Um, we, you know, we were talking about the, there was a lot of proposed um, amendments that were trying to be uh, delivered to the DWR. And a lot of those were, were turned down. Like there was, I know somebody was, one of the proposed things was uh, limit the amount of weeks of dog hunting. And they were trying to force it down to the last week of hunt 
blah, blah, blah. But all those have not even, they haven't even made it. There, there's no way. Um, but the, the ones that are actually being presented, there is another board meeting around the 21st <laughs> of June, around this month. Uh, so anybody out there that's pro dog hunting that wants to have a voice on this, you can be, you, you are able to speak on this. Uh, I spoke last month uh, in the, the non-topic section, but I was able to speak last month um, and you can do the same this month. So if you're interested, keep an eye on the Virginia Dog Hunting Alliance's page and it tells you or email your, your board members. Anyway, the, the, there's four. One of them was so ridiculous, I didn't even write down. I knew that one That one was not even going to – I wouldn't even bother wasting my breath on. Um, now th- this one is funny. There's a couple things in here that I actually wouldn't mind seeing personally. Uh, but there's one that's a little, little touchy. And the, the two that I wouldn't mind seeing, um, dogs must wear collars with IDs on them, which is saying that – uh, any dog run, any d- hunting dog must have a collar and it must have a name plate with your the and contact information. And I agree wholeheartedly with that. I, I don't see why anybody would turn a dog loose without one, to be honest with you. Um, and the second one was the they want to direct the staff to develop a module to include include good practices on hunting with dogs to be included into the uh, hunter education course. And I'm completely fine with that, depending on how it's handled. As long as it's not biased against dog hunting, I don't see any problems with that. Um, But the last one we'll kind of touch on real quick. Um, it's it's really going after the right to retrieve is what it's, it's what its main attack is on, um, and in 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 concept I could see where okay I, I could be okay with this, but they, they want to they want it to be a rule that you must make an attempt to contact the landowner if the name and if the name and number is on the posted signs. Um, I'm gonna kind of give my two cents on that, and then David, I'll get your kind of opinion on this. Um, I I could see it in theory where yes I could agree to that wholeheartedly you know I, I would if if I had somebody's dog on my land at, at my shop or whatever I would want I'd want to know who was coming on there but there are certain situations um, that you come across as in if, if, um, if a deer has, has caught, has, has ended up catching up to a deer that has been shot and killed and it comes onto another property and you're down at a bottom and you have no cell phone signal or you, there's no posted signs within sight distance. How do you, how, how do you, I don't understand. I don't think you could, I think there's a regulation um, how do I say this? The way you could enforce it and, and make it work. Um, cause I know that if, if I was down in the bottom, I was going down to this bottom and I got to this, to the property line, which if it's not fenced in, how am I supposed to know for one and two, if there's no posted signs anywhere within sight distance, then how, how do I know who to contact? And I need to get to that dog before one, God forbid the deer is still alive and the deer does something to injure the dog. Or, uh, if, if, um, or the dog is going to tear up the deer and ruin the, the, ruin the meat that you're going after. There's a lot of certain scenarios that you need to get in there and get to that dog as fast as you can. And I will say that, and and don't take this and anybody out there listening, don't take this the wrong way. We are not above trying to get in contact with somebody. I know if there is a a way or an ability, I know almost everybody in our club, the first thing they do is try to get in contact. We go knock on the door if we need to, or or whatever the situation is. It's always different scenarios, but we do 
make any attempt that we can um, to get in contact with somebody. But I, I don't know. I, I could see where this one, if it was wrote out very elaborate, I just, I, I think it's a little too loose ended and too open ended to actually, to make any sense and make it actually correct and right. Um, so David, what's kind of your, what's, what's your kind of take on that? Are they just doing the right to retrieve for the dog or deer, you know, a wounded deer or killed deer too? Dogs. And it's actually, and this is where, uh, I, this is where it gets really funny too, because it's a, it's a direct attack toward deer dog hunters okay there's no there's no mention about beagles uh rabbit beagles there's no mention about bear hounds there's no mention about uh, uh fox hounds there's no mention about anything other than strictly deer dogs so it's a direct attack on the deer hunting sport is what it is i mean I, personally i've never had an issue with anyone that's tried to retrieve a dog on our property right i mean nine times out of ten they've always found someone and said something right right and it's now, it's a general consensus cons, consensus yeah now i will say that you know i i do know of some picky landowners that would probably throw a fit if they're walking down their field and here comes a Toyota pickup running Mach 30. Correct. And his excuse is, I'm just trying to find my dog. Well, I, and on that, actually, you're not allowed to right to retrieve. You're not allowed to drive in. And I know that. Yeah. 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 So, like you said, I see it as an attack directly on dog hunters. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm glad, you, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad you see it that way as a, as a steel hunter and as, as a property owner, your own self. Yeah. It just, it doesn't, I, I think the rules that we have in place now protect both sides equally. You know, and most of you, like you said, nine times out of 10, your, your average and your everyday dog hunter has the respect that if it is one of them things of, okay, I need to go up your driveway or I need to, I'm, I'm out of here on the hard top and need to go in. We're coming to find you. We're coming to knock on a door or something like that. And the right to retrieve in Virginia, you're not allowed to carry any weapon. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to carry a firearm. And you have to walk in. You have to leave your property at the highway or at the end of the driveway on the right of way. And you have to walk in. Yeah. From what I understand, it is the only time by law that a concealed carry permit is even null and void. Yep, that's correct. <clears throat> correct. Yep. You are it is you are not allowed to carry a firearm, period. In. So uh, I don't know. I mean to me if it like you said, there's picky landowners out there that, that make it bad. Um, you know, Daniel, Dylan, either one of y'all got any kind of comments or, or ideas on that? I mean, I do agree to try and let somebody know that you're on their property to, to retrieve. And I mean, dogs, sometimes they're going to come out. I mean, you can try and train them to Make sure if they're done hunting, hey, come to you. But it don't always work. Right. But I've driven right past several of my dogs 15 yards in the woods, but it's on somebody's property. I'd much rather let them people know, hey, I'm, I'm here. My dogs are 15 yards off your off your driveway here. Uh, I'm just letting you know that I'm here to retrieve my dogs before I right. even try it. I, and 98% of the time, respect. that's what happens. Oh, yeah. I mean, I drive right past them and look right at them like, hey, 
look what y'all are making me do right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that, that's to be a dog hunter. That that's what you need to do. You need you've got to respect land owners. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and another good thing, and and James, I know the club does it. If if you know you're running in a certain area and you know your dogs are in certain areas most of the time, talk to the landowners before season. And say, mm-hmm. hey, if my dogs get over here, do y'all mind if we walk in and, and get them? And James, right. I know the club's got a lot of land where y'all got permission to retrieve, but that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got several spots that people – yeah, absolutely. Anytime you need to go in there, go in there and get it. Just don't carry a gun. Then no, yeah. no hunting, no shooting. Um, I, a, I've even that... I've even heard of clubs doing, and we've talked about doing it before, but we've just never actually broke down and done it. But a lot of clubs will actually take in those people that they they actually do a big cooking, like I do a they do a uh, like hot dogs, hamburgers, and and drinks, and and whatever, and invite all the landowners around the property that they hunt over, and just everybody get together, get to know each other, and kind of find a common ground with each person. Kind of a little appreciation lunch. Yeah, pretty much. Come, yeah, I can, I can yeah. see where that that that's good. Yeah, yeah, but but then also you've got those those specific ones. Like uh, David just said, you got those ex- specific landowners that, all right, you got a club sitting here, but you, you're only going to allow this guy, this guy, and this guy in, and the yeah. rest of them. I, I, and that can cause a can cause a little discussion in, inside the club. It does. They've but, got people like that. Yeah. I mean, it's... And, uh, and, and I tell you, one of the one of the there's one situation I'm I'm thinking of is last year, it was the it was talking about the season before, and we have a driveway. It's a one of those kind of driveways. There's multiple houses, multiple different families on it, and it's a right away driveway to one of our hunting land, one of our hunting plots, and everybody on that road has always just requested that on on that road well we had one guy that it was actually one of the neighboring clubs we had and that dude flew down their driveway i mean he was going 45 50 mile an hour down the driveway and just complete lack of dis- disrespect well the landowners caught him and caught the truck and raised all holy hell and they were trying everything in their power to get us kicked off of the, our leased land. They were calling the uh, warehouser and, I mean, raising enough cane to where warehouser was contemplating kicking us. So we had a meeting with the the people on that on that driveway. That member that was flying up and down the driveway, showing that lack of respect, was not a member anymore. He was kicked from the club. I mean, instantly. And when the land, when the landowners and the property owners heard that, it completely changed their attitude towards. They're like, "Oh, okay, y'all are actually serious about this. This is y'all don't just go out here and and and, and drive up and down our driveway as fast as you can for for fun. Y'all actually have people that are disrespectful and and do it, and y'all take care of it. And once they heard that, it was perfectly fine they haven't made any more noise about it and we all get along and they wave as we go by now so it's just you know there are certain things that can be done but um but i I believe that's that's all i got as far as, as that goes um you know david you said you didn't have anything else correct no i'm good bill and daniel did y'all have anything else for david uh, I'm good. No, no. Be it. Perfect. Perfect. Well, along with all that, um, I, I think that made a pretty good little episode right there. I hope everybody enjoys it. Um, you know, we kind of we, we hopped off air for a second real quick to to talk with amongst everybody and to thank David for joining us. And he um I didn't really give him the, the a great sign off. We kind of talked in in private, um, 
off the off the record, off the air a little bit. And uh, so, with Dev, David out there, appreciate you and joining us, and it really means a lot that you get on here as a, as a steel hunter and as a landowner and in support of dog hunting. Um, and he made a really good point. Um, hunting as a whole will always be under attack. You know, we talk about. Um, we talk about st- dog hunters versus steel hunters and dog hunters under attack and dog hunting as a whole and fox pens under attack all the time. But um, hunting as a whole, it will always be um, attacked. There's there's all kinds of different groups that are always going to be on there. And he, he made a good point that once once we let one thing fade out, once, like if he just as an example, once dog hunting gets canned, um who knows what's next who knows what they're going to go after next and <clears throat> eventually down the road they could, the whole sport could die as a whole the whole hunting deer hunting sport as a whole could just vanish and that's the last thing we want we want to be able to, to really get in there with our kids and, and i want to be able to raise kids to hunt and, and do that kind of stuff so we're, we have to all band together. We have to all work together and, and find the common ground and get along. So, um, David, we appreciate you being on here, buddy. It really meant a lot to us. Um, I was going to go into the, the hunts and results, um, page, but we've made a pretty long episode already. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to, we're going to have this episode and we'll air this episode tomorrow. And what we're going to start, we may even start doing this as a whole, since our episodes seem to kind of go on for a long time, uh, a little bit longer than what we'd like, actually, um, we might start doing, and I know this week we'll do it. I may even drop it tomorrow, either Thursday. I will do a section specifically on hunts and results. So any kind of hunts that are coming up and uh, the results from the past weeks, we'll do that on a whole separate thing. So if you want to listen to that and, and tune in for that, keep an eye out tomorrow and Thursday, and we'll have it posted. But um, other than that, from from me, Daniel, and Dylan, thank you all all so much for listening, um, and, and happy hunting out there, everybody.